Game on. And as well as the UK Open champion Nathan Aspinall, we have a man making his first quarterfinal appearance on the European soil. Van Dijvenmoda making his first final day appearance, but it's going beyond that. It's getting better and better. He's into the last eight, and he's got a shot at a place in the semi-finals oh, against 92. either Gerwin Price or Mencior Sulevic, who meet in our final quarter-final of the evening. Aspinall, the number 10 seed against Van Dijvenboda. Paul Nicholson alongside oh, me, Rob Malarca for this one. Yeah, things are looking bright for Dirk right now. I've actually figured out what his walk-on song's all about. Go on. He's trying to... Uh, extract information from his opponents by confining them to a box and putting uh, them through that music, very much like the CIA would. <laughs> uh, Dirk, whatever you want to know, I'll tell you. Just make it stop. <laughs> but he's not stopping. And this season could be his breakthrough season. But you have oh, to see it right now, Aspinall seems to be warming to the rhythm of the European tour. I was just going to make the point. I mean, Van Dijvenboda into the quarterfinals for the first time. He is a man who's got no experience of a, a final day on the European Tour. It is a long day, and it can be quite tiring as well. And I think it's something that does come with experience. Now, last year, Nathan Aspinall made three quarterfinals and a semi-final on the European Tour. He knows he's got the big stage experience as well to yeah, go with it in abundance as he takes out that double 16 for a 1-0 a lead. First, and on. I think that may well come to be a factor. There's a lot to be said for that, certainly. Oh. Van Dijvenboda might just get on with it and just enjoy it for what it is. Why it's not? another match. It's almost like a home crowd for him in many respects. Plenty of Dutch fans watching here in the... Arena in Hasseltz. Just going to pause what I was about to say. You'd be wise to do that, Paul, because that's five perfect darts. Oh, and he tried to take out the 19, but he strayed away from that. We have gone close to a nine dart leg this uh, weekend. Twice. Twice. Yesterday with MVG and oh, Mensor. Eight perfect darts from him earlier today as well in his win over Steve West. Yeah, we were both in Gibraltar back in September when Aspinall made the semis there and he disposed of Van Gerwen oh, that seven. day. But it was that day that told me that Aspinall was warming to how you have to peak for certain moments within the European Tour weekend. Oh, and I think he's going to be a seed for a very, very long time. Well, if you look at it, actually, before that defeat by Chizzy in the semis, he actually beat Wright and Van Gerwen, so he beat a former world champion and the future world champion. 70, sir. Well, he'll be hoping now that Aspinall can't find this 1-3-6. Well, Nathan's more likely to hit this than probably anybody right now. Had a 1-6-7 in this tournament so far. 46. Not the best. We had a 1-7 from Ryan Seale. 20. But Dirk needs to start hitting doubles cleanly. Yeah, and that is a lovely 13 dart hole. You look at his face as well, he's having fun. And we were mentioning earlier about getting up there and enjoying it. You can forget to do that if you think about where you're standing, what position you're in. You can't forget to have fun at what you do. And even though some of his walk ons this weekend have been more subdued than usual. Maybe that's a good thing, because he can reserve a little bit of energy. He did seem to have rediscovered a little bit of vigour with that walk-on that he provided tonight, though. But we, yeah, we talked. I mean, we touched upon the prize money situation. Yeah, yeah. Five thousand pounds is guaranteed now for making the quarterfinals. Uh, so he's almost earned this year as much as he earned in the whole of 2019. Fourteen and a half thousand no, pounds last year in prize money. And even if he loses this match, he'll already be on £10,500 for the year so far. Now, that has got to do in the world of good. That has just got to give him so much confidence yeah, and so much freedom to just relax and just give things a go. Because when you are, I mean, Nathan Aspinall will tell you all about that. He has spoken extensively about the pressure he was under. He wasn't bringing prize money, and he was yeah, contemplating yeah. walking away from the game a little over a year ago. Of course, then he had this transformation. And... Van Dijvenboda will take a lot from the experience of people like Nathan Aspinall. He, he is a great benchmark for that. Abs I think he is 
probably one of the most inspirational players in the game right now. And Stuart gets a very unfortunate wire. I mean, that's, I mean, I really enjoyed that interview that Aspinall did. He did it with Dan, actually, uh, in a uh, piece prior to one of the uh, major tournaments. And he was really open about it. And, you know, he wasn't oh, afraid to just sort of admit that he had been struggling financially. He knew he had to make a decision uh, for the benefit of himself and his family for the future. And it was a really measured, mature appraisal of where he was, both you know, professionally and financially. Can you imagine the game right now without him? I can't. No, he's, I mean, he's, he is a mainstay now in, in, in the higher yeah, echelons of the game. And he's taken out that 92 with these two. On. First, game on. Um, everything is achieved in such a short space of time. He would be a big miss now if he, if he, if he wasn't here. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't well, know it, but you know, if he suddenly decided to call it a day now, he would be a huge absence. I don't think he will do that, by the way. Oh, touch wood. Let's hope we're seeing lots of Nathan for minimum a decade, I'll say. Of heavy hitting and heavy scoring and lots of titles. Well, he's only 28, uh, Nathan Aspinall. He's 29 later this year, so he's got 96. plenty of time on his side as well to achieve all he wants to achieve. He's achieved plenty already. And the thing is, he's achieving, or he started to achieve what he's achieved at around about the age that Van Dijven Boda is now. Yeah, good age for a dark player. Late 20s, going in towards that 30 mark. I think that's the new accelerator point. Look at someone like Chris Dolby, Rob Cross, for instance. Very hot right now. It's, it's funny as well, because we talk about often these European tour events being a stepping stone to other things, but Aspinall seems to have done it the other way around. He's won a TV major, of course, the UK Open. He's won a World Series event. He's won a Pro Tour event as well. So this seems the next logical step, but in the wrong order, if you know what I mean. Give wow. I haven't seen anybody go for 75 that way for years. Well, yeah. oh, I think that's very cool. He did go an unorthodox way earlier on today, didn't he, for something? Uh, I'm just trying to wrap my brain as to what that was against Jeffrey Desvan. I'll just check my notes quickly. Well, he had one two five. Yeah, there. it was the one two one checkout. He went fifty four bull, didn't he, after the single seventeen? Yeah, he went for the fifty one to take well, off the one, the twenty yeah. bull. But if you get the single, it's fifty four bull. But there, he gets the centre point. He hits the button, and then after that, he's got a choice: fifty one for double twelve. He can go twenty five bull if he wants the heroic shot. But thirty nine thirty six, he's just opened people up to a new idea. One hundred. Well, another thing as well about Dirk and Nathan, for that matter, is that they both have minimum 5,000 on their European Tour order merit. That's a really good start yeah, to nice. position themselves for Dortmund. You're virtually halfway there, then, aren't you? I mean, that's a big thing for that, uh, Van Dijvenbode. So, in effect, that will guarantee him another first-round prize money. What, £5,000 in that as well? So, there's another chunk of cash for him to look forward to later in the year. Well, I'll, I'll, he gets down, I think he I'll say at this point, I know it was 12,000 last year with Michael Smith at 32, but I would say at 5,000, you're a third of the way there to be safe. Yeah. 91. I don't want to be thinking about that. One event into 13, though. You want to be thinking about potentially winning this game and the, the title. And the title will take care of ever so much more. Nathan Uruguay, 82. Well, this could be the year when things just start to happen for Van Dijvenbode, if things start to open up. Double 16 here for Aspinall after that bullseye. Yeah, yeah beautifully played, Nathan. right in the top bed. Is Dirk to throw first. Yeah, you heard the reaction from uh, Nathan there as well. That was clearly a, a big deal for him because he knows he's under a bit of pressure here. And the pressure just keeps on coming oh, from Van Dijvenbode. Look at that. Second 180 of the match. But again, it's come at a good time. Just putting Aspinall back in his box for a moment or two. But Aspinall is climbing out of the box here Ooh, <laughs> with a 177 of his own. I was just about to say, Rob, there's no nothing more dangerous in sport than someone who fancies it. And Dirk fancies it right now. But Aspinall, with experience 93. and guile, just get the feeling he is resistant enough to fend off. Dirk. Oh, here we go. Surely. Oh, he's short. He can't be short on dart six. 
Well, I talked about Aspinall climbing out of his box. It was more like the snake uncoiling out of the basket, wasn't it, really, more than anything, because there was just a little spring in the step for Nathan Aspinall there. But he's in control, importantly, on the Van Dijven Boda throw, and he's stolen the darts as well after that slightly sluggish visit by Van Dijven Boda. And he's in the red stuff once again for 436. Another attempt to lead himself a, a decent setup. I don't care who you are when it comes to world class dart playing, but you are very tempted to leave double two there. But sensibly, he didn't. And he's coming back for a double, which he's hit twice already. Yeah, Make that three. That was almost in exactly the same spot, wasn't it? The throw first. As in the previous leg. Game. Almost landing in the hole that was left on the impression. I was wrong. Oh, I was right, actually. Four out of five. Six. Talk about the best double top hitters and the best double 18 hitters in the world. Well, right now, there aren't many better at double 16 than Nathan. I will say that. 40. Has he broken Van Dijven Border in more ways than one? You can see him in the back just saying, lift it, come on. Gonna have to dig deep now because he's up against 59. someone of similar age, similar energy, but more experience in this spot. And you can see the leg breakdowns, the average breakdowns, but there the energy comes from Dirk. And the Dutch contingent, the support crew, enjoying that moment as well. But Aspinall again, look at this. Well, he's, en he's really enjoying this game, Aspinall. It's just exactly the sort of encounter that he likes. Because Van Dijvenboer is bringing out the best in him, and he's going the right way about it himself if he wants to claw his way back onto parity here with another break. I don't think anybody this weekend has hit back-to-back 180s more than Dirk. When he's hot, he is white hot. Got to hit this. As Aspinall can pounce now, 69. having the advantage of Maybe throw here, be in response to the 280s, might be in vain. Went for the treble 14 for these tops off Dirk target. Van Van Dijvenboda, well this is the source of opportunity that he simply cannot afford to pass up if he wants to force his way back into this one. Double eights. Yeah, Calm as you like, I've been really impressed with his composure once again he's showing first. no sign of nerves and let's face it he's not a shrinking violet is he but i'm sure he came onto stage Game with a few off. butterflies in his stomach but he's playing really confidently at times and even yeah. when he was on the back foot there four two down he had the gumption to come back and find the break once again yeah he's definitely playing more titan than titanic and aspinall back in that lipstick. Third dart has plagued him a little bit. He's had a couple of shots that come up short. That one was not short, but it's shellacked into that flight and gone yeah, on the floor. That's, that's 60 points on the floor. On the floor I think, uh, maybe hard to tell with the deviation, but anyway, here we go. 3 8 1 now. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Back on track with two trebles anyway. Van Dijvenboda knows he can't afford to let up. And he's not letting up. Boy, that was risky. He was on 268, hits a ton, he leaves 168. Yeah. I don't think he knew where he stood because uh, Dirk doesn't make those kind of mistakes usually. But maybe, just maybe, yeah, I mean, he could have switched, but just has a lot of confidence in his shot making ability in this one, I think. Risky it was, though. Well now, went for the treble to leave double 18. The break back opportunity for Aspinall. Yeah, it's there, isn't it? And he's got the treble 19. 50 away, 18 for double 16, for 5 3. 75. And that's uncharacteristic. He's been pretty Thank lethal on double 72. 16, not only today, but all weekend and all year. Two shots at sixes. Perfect guide. Yeah. He's level. Yeah. It's yeah. for a peach, yeah. as they say yeah. in the yeah. northeast. Game. Didn't he use that first start well though? You just saw it brush alongside it, just nestled it in, and he used it really effectively. What a response that is! Yeah, that dart was the equivalent of my sister's driving. It was a get out of the way shot. 140. Oh, 
I'll tell you, you said that, Paul. <laughs> Why do you think I said it from about 2,000 miles away? <laughs> oh, he's, he's having a brilliant game, is, is Dirk here, yeah, and Aspinall knows that he's coming from. Aspinall's not doing anything wrong yet, apart from missing the odd shot. Well, that's staggering. We've had five 180s in this match, Seven and Aspinall teams. hasn't thrown one of them. Whatever happens, Dirk is going to be loving the way he's responded to snarl. the deficit. The look of disgust on the face after that second dart by Van Der. He's setting himself really high standards tonight. He knows he can play well with this amount of energy. This is what he lives for. He just hasn't had the vehicle before. He's probably more comfortable playing in this environment uh, in a quarterfinal than on the floor. Yeah, and you can just see him. He, he wanted to get on with that and get back on the hockey ASAP. He was prowling around like a, a caged lion at the back of the stage, just waiting his turn. 2-2-1. Two, two, Need to treble here. 57. Mm, now then, has that just stopped him in his tracks? He is down to a finish first, but it's a big one. Oh, yeah. Good adjustment. 100. Quite surprised he didn't go for 18s on that last dart. Could we be in for a blockbuster? Oh, it's a really good use of the board. I thought he might stay on the 54 there. Try and nestle another one in. Two at 19s. Oh, that's immense from Aspinall. One of the hardest 90-yard checkouts you can have. Game and after Dirk had a little sprint against him, he showed his own little bit of steel. Yeah, my word, this is fast emerging as a, a really strong candidate for match of the weekend so far. I mean, the average is sky high, 104.4 for Nathan Aspinall. Van Dijvenbode, well over a ton as well. His finishing and indeed Aspinall's finishing has been even better. When he's got the opportunities, he's not missing many. Only two darts at a double have been passed up by Nathan Aspinall, and that is its own warning sign for Van Dijvenbode. He knows that he can't afford, really, to give Aspinall too many opportunities. So much so that, I mean, that missed dart at double 16 was a genuine surprise. Such are the standards Aspinall has set so far this evening. And we talked about the cover shooting on 19s by Ritsinski. Van Dijvenbode also doing that particular thing very well also. 100. Aspinall tunning down a dart. Make that two darts in front now, Dirk. Make that three. Don't stay there. No, he's moved. Wonderful, oh, wonderful play. 71. Sensible to stay away from that one and then to find the trouble 17 to leave a two dart combination for a potential 11 dart holder throw to force a decider. Disappointing from Aspinall. Maybe just maybe accepting that this one is going to go the distance. Double eight. 80. He will be back. Well, I think he threw that double eight shot. A bit hopeful. He's going to have to hit it this time. Can't afford to get shaky. Yeah, and doesn't. We are going all the way. Ten legs in. Yes. Ten legs is brilliant. Look at that. I mean, there was nothing wrong with that at all. There was no doubt about that. It was hit with purpose and it landed dead center in that double eight bed. 96. Five all, brilliant stuff from these two. And I think whatever happens, this is the weekend that Dirk van Dijvenbode has really come of age. 58. His box office is what he is. There was a couple of years ago, a lot of chatter about people's celebrations and things, but I want to know how these guys feel when they hit shots. Oh, you got two guys who tell us how they feel. And this is the kind of game I want to watch every day of the week. They just clearly, I mean, these two just clearly both care so much oh, about this. Oh, they're putting everything on the line. Even Nathan Aspinall's mates are getting something out of Dirk here. He's entertaining. Can Aspinall get it done? Oh, he can't uh, leave a 170, though. Wow. Well, that's a huge slip up, and that might just give Van Dijvenbode a little bit of encouragement when perhaps he was just beginning to feel a bit despondent. Wow, and he's certainly building on it, isn't he? That's how you do it. He can't possibly do a Nathan to Nathan, can he? Don't rule out anything in this. It's been such a high caliber, high octane encounter. What's going on here? Great recovery with the final bar, but he needed that. My word, did he need that? How big will that treble 20 be 
in about 15 seconds. Watch out. It's oh. a ball! Oh, oh, the line was good. He just over pitches it by about four millimeters. And Aspinall, after that wonderful last oh. start 60, will have maybe one shot for the match. And that treble 20 could prove very, very significant indeed. 38 40. That'll be his target. He's gone for the 54. And now it's down to Dirk. He was edgy with the final double against his Vaughan. How edgy is he now? This Dirk is for the semis. Van Dijvenbode, the first to get match darts. Oh, just. Game double shot. eight again for Dirk Van Dijvenbode. And it brings to an end a tumultuous encounter. 102.94 against 103.75. Both players take a bow, an absolute classic on the European tour, and it ends with Dirk van Dijvenbode keeping the dream alive and advancing to a first ever European tour semi-final. What a 2020 it has been for the young Dutchman so far. The UK Open champion is beaten. He can now focus on defending his title in Minehead next weekend. But for now, Dirk van Dijvenbode can get ready for a semi-final here in Belgium against either Gerwin Bryce or Mensur Sulevic. And just look what it means. Brilliant, brilliant darts. Van Dijvenbode through 6-5.